One of the questions that we kind of get a lot is like, where'd you see that? So I thought that that might be kind of fun to just sort of talk about on this one. We'll be real with you in that sometimes it's just about being in the right place at the right time. And being willing to do a night dive certainly helps. But also just being ready, you know, because when you're underwater, you literally never know who is going to show up and here and gone. In this case, we were curious by the bass. We thought, what is he doing? And he, he was very interested in something that was going on. So we kind of snuck in to see for ourselves and were pleasantly surprised to find a nest of chubs that were spawning, actively spawning. So this is some really cool behavior that we really love and that we thought we'd share with you. So these are actually horny headed chubs and you might be able to guess that because of the lumps or nodules that are on top of the male's head. The big one with the bumps on his head, that's the male. Males also have a red dot behind their eye and their fins are kind of rosy colored a little bit. And all the other ones are females, so he's going to spawn with a bunch of females. The girls are laying their eggs and then he's fertilizing them um, in the bottom. So before we arrived and before we saw this, he had actually dug a hole in the bottom, moved a bunch of rocks out of the way, and then that's where they're spawning. And really, you can see from it, just, it'd be very easy to swim right by this and not even notice it. So, um, But of course, you know, when you stop and get up close and really look, it's, it's just, I think, really very cool. One of the books I read said that the male actually pins the female to the bottom when they spawn, but frankly, I'm not sure if I'm seeing that. You guys can decide if you think they are or not. Feel free to comment below and tell us what you think. I feel like it's a pretty traditional spawn where the, both the male and the female both just kind of, you know, wiggle in the bottom at the same time, but you tell us what you think. So there's a couple of yellow perch coming in. Watch what the predators are doing. If you see a vulture circling in the sky, you kind of know there's a carcass on the ground. Well, same thing, you know, if you see predators circling and then you can pretty well guess that there's something cool going on. Yellow perch, they're again, predators love fish eggs. If you read all the, their diet fish eggs, well, this is the kind of thing that they just can't wait to get in there and see if they can gobble them all up. But the male chub has a plan or how he's gonna try to make sure that doesn't happen. Greg was there for 28 minutes, is how much footage we have of this. So went on for a good half hour. It started again before we arrived on site, so can't really say for sure how long it actually lasted. But just kind of pointing out that if you swam by or you went by about two hours later, you'd never even know it had happened and you completely have no clue. There is kind of a direct link between how much time you spend in the water and underwater looking around to how many cool things you're gonna see. You know, if you think about the oceans, people go down on reefs and they'll sit on a reef in one little spot and just look at all the little tiny little things. But it seems like in the Great Lakes, everybody just like rushes out to the shipwrecks and rushes back to shore and they kind of miss everything in between. We're, uh, we're all about staying more in shallows and, and seeing what cool things you can find. Okay, so now we're done spawning and he's now he's going to camouflage or protect the nest by literally covering it up. Sometimes I'll read things, they'll say, oh, the fish move rocks, and you think, how does a fish move a rock? Well, if you ever wondered that yourself, then here you go. Major rock moving. Every time I watch this, I just think it's the coolest thing, seeing the way he grabs them. And he's also fairly precise if you really watch him. He fills in all the holes, he makes sure that the whole thing gets really well covered, that there won't be any eggs. Actually, when he's completely done, you'll never even know that they were there. It's like level bottom again. But he even picks up like big rocks and little rocks because he like fills in like the holes and stuff even not just you know so it's not just big rocks so i think that's really cool and some of them he places that seems like even kind of a little bit precisely and then you'll see like again another yellow perch is going to circle through and he's not going to find anything And we see a goby came in, just came in from the upper right corner. And I'm gonna point out that we saw a goby, a singular goby. Um, 15 years ago when the gobies were at their peak in this area, this behavior would have been threatened. They, they would have had a hard time pulling this off with the gobies would have been like all over them. But now there's one. <laughs> so thanks so much for watching. Uh, we hope that you're enjoying our content. Please consider subscribing. We're trying to grow our channel and appreciate and love your comments. So. Thanks very much.